Today's topic is on prayer. And prayer, if we would talk to the believers, is something that we all know we need to do, but it's one of the first things we forget to do. And sometimes we go days, weeks, and even months worshiping God, but we don't talk to God. Prayer is something that's so vital to the power that God wants to have within our lives. Prayer is the means that we have to connect, to understand what God is trying to do within our lives. So for the next three or four weeks, we're going to talk about prayer. Because I believe before you and before the church can take the next step in our life and the next step into the church, we have to have the power of God within our lives. There's things within your life that God wants to radically give to you. But he wants to do things within his scheme. And he wants your heart to be melted into his life. So why do we even pray? What is the point of prayer when God knows the future and he's already in control? Well, if God's going to do it, just let him do it. Don't, you don't have to worry about anything. If we can't change God's mind, why do we even pray? But listen to this answer. Prayer is a two-way conversation with the creator of the universe. It's a supernatural experience between a believer and their maker. It's the pathway a person takes to enter into God's presence. So often we're like the guy that just prays the list and prays non-thinking. They just don't even know who they're talking to. And we have to realize that when I bow my knees and I lift up my hands to God, I'm praying to my creator, my savior. It's not something I just talk. It's not words that come out of my mouth. It is something that's deep within our heart, within our life. There are things that I have to change and there's things that God wants me to change. And as long as I stand focused on my desires and my needs, And say, I don't really care what God you have in store. I'm going to do what I have in store. And what I have in store is the big I. And I'm going to leave you out. And so often we leave God out of our conversation, our worship, and our conversation. And we find ourselves flat on our backs. Then, and only then, we lift up our eyes to God. And we say, Lord, I need your help. Why do we pray? There's all kinds of reasons why we pray. First thing is prayer is a form of obeying Him. Prayer is a form of of honoring God. In Colossians chapter 4 verse 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. We can honor God because we realize that God is the creator of the universe. He's the savior of my soul. He's the keeper of my life. And I can vigilantly, honestly open up my heart and I can talk to him. And he desires the conversation. He desires for me to share my vulnerabilities and my experiences. Yes, does he know? Yeah, he knows what's going on. He absolutely knows what I'm doing. And he absolutely knows that sometimes what I am doing is not what he wants me to do. He has given to us the very word of God to give to us direction within our life. But prayer is the ability that you have to get on your knees or driving down the street or leaving, laying in bed and just focusing not on what's going on in the surroundings, but what God is doing in your life. See, one of the biggest honors that I have as a pastor is praying. The Bible says this is supposed to be a house of prayer. God should be the priority within this house. Worship, yes. Preaching, yes. But prayer is getting a hold of God. And if the house of God gets a hold of God through prayer, it is power that we have never experienced before. When you go to a hospital room, or when you go through counseling, and you just ask this question, can I pray for you. What you're asking them is, can I talk to God on your behalf? Not a counselor, not a book, not tools. Can I pray to God on your behalf that God can supernaturally come down and rescue you? There's times in our life, it's very difficult. There's times in our life that 
we have some dry places and we feel like God is not listening and we feel like every prayer that I offer, it feels like it's just going on deaf ears. But I want to assure you, God is listening. God says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in all thanksgiving. Thank God that he's going to be listening to you. Be strong when you feel like he's not. Be awake, be aware. It's an ability to obey God. And then we pray because God, he asks us to pray. He, asks, he pleads with us. He said, just talk to me. This is a supernatural connection of the maker to us. He loves us and he died for us. And he says to the believer, I desire you. Remember what I've done for you. Remember where you're going when you die from here. You are going to be with me in eternity. Please talk to me. Please share your heart with me. Not out of arrogance, but out of humility. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in, what's the next word? Everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And he, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you're hurting, you want, you want help? You go, to the, you go to the throne room of God on your knees and he'll give you peace that you don't understand. He'll guard your heart and guard your life. We can't do that. There's not a friend in the world that could do that. God is the only person that we go to him in prayer. He will guard us. He will wrap his arms around us and keep us and keep us tied into his presence. It is God's will that we desire. Why do we pray? Not because it's words out of our mouth. We pray because we want to talk to God. And we need God's guidance within our life. Prayer is the most ultimate sign of faith. When you have faith, when you are a man or woman of faith, you're saying, I need God. When you are a man and a woman of lack of faith, you would say, God, I got this on my own. And when we have it on our own, we fail miserably. And listen to this one. Prayer demonstrates for us, prayer is demonstrated for us by Jesus himself. When Jesus was here, he prayed himself to the Father. He prayed to continue his work. Now, in Mark, I'm going to give you three verses, and then we're going to talk about the middle one. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed in a solitary place, and there he prayed. You know, whether you're a morning person, I don't like you if you're a morning person. <laughs> Mornings are, oh, I mean, no, nah, I can stay up till two in the morning, but get up at four in the morning. I, I was always wondering why the doctors didn't do surgeries at night, okay? They, if, everybody says, oh yeah, I got to check in at four o'clock in the morning. I said, what? I said, Pastor Al, can you check that one for me? <laughs> I mean, morning people are crazy. Anyway, but wherever, you know, whatever you do, whether you're awake, alert, and on task in the morning, or whether it's in the day that you have some time, when we talk to God, not only when we're broken, but a time where we set apart to communicate to God, make sure we are alert, sharp, and aware. Make sure that we're not just doing idle words out of our mouth and not even knowing what we're saying. We are humbly going before the creator of the world that loves you. Keep sharp. Even though that Jesus did that to our Heavenly Father. He said he rose up early and prayed. It's a time that he set apart to pray to God. Whether it is five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes. It makes no difference. What makes a difference is when you are communion with God. It's a supernatural ability to just open up your heart and tell him your life. He knows it, yes. Yes. But he wants to be a part of it. And he wants your will to match up with his will. And I like the last part of that video where he prayed the, the Lord's model prayer. But he didn't use the words of the model prayer. He used reality within that model prayer. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, how great, how hallowed are your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's words, and yes, we can. those are Jesus' words of a model prayer to us. But, Lord, how great you are and how weak I am and how much I need you every day of my life and how much I need you to talk to me and how much I need you to guide me. And I know that I have a lot of needs and desires and wants, but, Lord, you know what I have to have. And you know what I'm going through, and you know the problems that I have, and you know the needs of my family. I just ask you to be with me. And you know what? I do goof up a lot. And thank you for forgiveness. And Lord, give me the ability, when somebody goofs up against me, to forgive them. Because if we do not pray, that will never happen. If we do not get the heart sight of God's heart, we will never be able to forgive. And it says, deliver us from the evil one. We stumble and we fall. But Lord, we know that you're in control. And we know that you love us more than anything else. The model prayer is not words on a page. The model prayer goes from our heart to the heart of God. And when we can pray, Lord, I just need you. I don't want to go through this life with my mundane words, my life. I want to go through this life with you. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus said this, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they are doing. The best example of forgiveness was a prayer that Jesus offered hanging on a cross, dying for you. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. What they are doing is they're fulfilling your will. Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, just the night before, great drops of blood and agony was on Jesus. And he said, Father, my will I don't want to do this, but it is not about my will. It's about your will. God the Father, God the Son had communion the night before the crucifixion. He did. He knew what was going to take place. The agony, the pain, and the suffering of mankind placed upon his back. He knew it, but he said, Not my will, but thy will be done. And when we can say, not my will, but thy will, then prayer is at its right place. If Jesus thought it would be worthwhile to pray, we should pray. If he needed to pray to remain in the Father's will, how much more do we need to pray to remain in the Father's will? The Bible says that we should die daily to ourselves. Die daily, what's that mean? That means if we do not take time in our, di- in our daily life to put a focus on, I'm a father, follower of Jesus Christ, and my will is to do what he wants me to do, I have to sacrifice the big I and give it to him. Because if I continue to live for myself and I don't pray and I don't care what other people think, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I am the priority, but as soon as I humble myself, and as soon as I set aside a time, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, and I sacrifice, and I say, Lord, I want your will to be done within my life. I need you to open up my eyes. I need you to realize, I need to realize what you're wanting to do within my life. I know that you know, but I want to know what your will is, what your desires are for my life. And then the fourth thing, God intends prayer to be the means of obtaining his solution in a number of situations. You know, what, what is neat here is God already knows what's taking place. And God is already answering your prayers before you even pray. <laughs> he knows it. And he's already dispatching angels and situations and fixing the things before you even know there's a problem. But God wants you to realize, I can't fix the problem. I need God to fix the problem. He says, I'm right here. I'm right here. I know what you're going through. I know what's taking place, and I want to help you. Not to necessarily fix it, but allow you to understand it and allow you to apply my will to your scenario. You know, sometimes we pray prayers that can't be answered. Somebody laying on their deathbed. Somebody just had a major heart attack. And the family comes up and say, pray that they are healed. And I'm looking at that, and oxygen and and they've had five bypass surgeries and and they're they're as close to death as possible and death is imminent 
And they say, pray that they are healed. And it's hard for me to do this, but I can't pray that they get healed. What I have to pray is God's will. And that what we do is we accept God because God did not create us to live eternal on this earth. We are all mortal and we're all going to die. What we have to do is we have to prepare that time. And if we are going to die, we must be prepared. And we have to ask God's will will be done. Sure, I wish I, wish I could pray over everybody and say, I, uh, I pray that you lose 20 years of your life and you go back to me in 30 years again. Everybody would love me to pray for that. But that's idle words coming out of my mouth. That's not God's will. We have one life to live. The life that we have, we must give it to Christ. We can't pray those idle prayers. I was sitting in my mom's uh, living room today, and my mom suffered some, some major stuff going on in her life. And we're getting ready to do what many of you have had to do, is put your mother in nursing care facilities. And watching your mother give birth to you and take care of you and watching that deterioration within her life is very difficult, as many of you have seen and experienced. And I've prayed for a lot of people. I've prayed for a lot of people in nursing homes and hospitals. And I've prayed for a lot of people that have had to do the same thing that I'm getting ready to do. Um, my sister came over and... Uh, of course, I'm the preacher of the family. I'm, I'm the white sheep of the family. <laughs> she goes, oh, Mom, Bruce is here. Let him pray to God, and everything will be fixed. I just bowed my head. I said, you know, as a preacher, I honestly say a prayer for so many people, but a prayer to fix my mother that's 90 years old I can't say a prayer that's going to move her back to her younger days. I can't say a prayer that all of her broken bones will be fixed and her mind will be sharp. I wish I, wish I had that power. I'd pray over every person I've ever met every day in my life. I'd pray over myself first. <laughs> but I would pray over every person. But that's just not reality. The reality is that God has solutions, but sometimes those solutions are realities. And those realities is we have to understand what we're praying for and what we're praying with. And we do have to pray for God's will will be done. We have to pray that our will will be lined up with his will. So let's look at a couple of those things. The first thing is in preparation for major decisions. Sometimes we need to pray that God will give to us solutions in major decisions. The Bible tells us to pray about everything. But in James chapter 1, 5, if, you, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and will be given to you. If you don't know something, if you don't know what to do, Lord, help me. You don't have to have a long, drawn-out prayer. Remember, God knows your heart. The Holy Spirit lives within you. Lord, help me. Lord, what do I do? What do I need to do? I need to make a decision here. I don't know. Help me. He says this. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. God's not up saying, you don't know that. How long have you been in church? How many decisions have you made? God doesn't do that. He says, we say, I don't know. And God says, I know. Thank you for asking me. I will give you hope, help, and encouragement. And then B is to, to gather workers to the spiritual harvest. You know, we should pray for that. In Luke chapter 10, verse 2, Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord that the harvest to send out laborers into that harvest. We should pray for people that we're going to witness to, that we're going to give our lives to, that we're going to share our faith with. Pray to God and then go out. The, he said the fields are widened to harvest. And the harvest is great. But the laborers are few. Those that want to impact this world are few. Pray to God that God will give you some strength. The ability to share your faith, to reproduce yourself and others so other people can see Christ. And it's not only in the aspect of work. It's also in the aspect of giving. It's in the aspect of ministry. It's in the aspect of anything that you do for Christ. Pray that God will help you have the strength and the ability to fulfill what God has called you to do. 
And then C, to gain strength to overcome temptation. Now, all those things were good that we talked about. But let me tell you, we all have an adversary. And that adversary, Satan, hates you. And he wants to trip you up. And we need to pray daily. Watch and pray. Lest any into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We have a temptation. We have Satan. We have that demonic activity that wants to strip us up and wants to tear us down. And what we have to do, he says, watch and pray. Be alert. Don't do things that are stupid. Watch. Know what God says. Know what you should do. And then pray. Pray that Satan will not trip you up. Pray that you will not listen to the lies of Satan. Pray that you do not listen to the lies of this world. Listen to God. It says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh, the heart, the mind, where we go, what we do, what we say, how we act is weak. We have to tie what we know to the word of God. And we have to be on our knees and say, Lord, I know why you are in control of everything, but I need you to help me to withstand Satan. I need you to withstand the things that take me down and then to obtain the means of strengthening others spiritually. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, it says, Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. We need to pray for other people. We need to pray for those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that are struggling, the relationships. We need to pray for people. We need to give them encouragement. Prayer is a believer tying into the holiness of God in a supernatural spirit that somebody could talk to God and he can unleash his power upon our life. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not falling asleep in bed. Prayer is not just uttering words that you forget what you're saying. Prayer is, I understand that I am talking to a holy God and that holy God loves me and he wants to work with me and through me. It's not just words that I say. It's not a, a prayer at the dinner table. It is getting the hold of Almighty God and saying, God, I need you with everything that I have. It is not my will, but it's thy will that I need to obtain. The lack of prayer demonstrates the lack of faith and the lack of trust in God. I can do this myself. It's also talking about the lack of humility. And we say this a lot. I've got this. I'll pray on the big things. Pray over everything. That's what God has asked us to do. Prayer demonstrates faith. And when we do not pray, God is saying, where is our faith? He could also say, where is our relationship? Where is our understanding of what I've done for you? I sent my son to die on the cross, and he bore your sin. Can't you talk to me? Prayer is not a different version of a language, a different attitude of the heart. Prayer is just saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me, and I'm getting ready to go through some struggles here at work, or I'm going through some health issues. I, I don't know what to do. Can you help me? And can you guide me and can you give me direction? I know some family members of mine are going through some junk and I know somebody is really sick and I just, can you help us out? Can you, can you lift them up? Can you give them encouragement? Can you allow us to understand what's taking place? You know, I have prayed over this last couple of weeks that I have, I have some family members that and when we're making decisions and we all have to make those decisions that one thing that we are in is in harmony. Because the last thing you would do is make family decisions with a house full of mad people. All right? So I have prayed. We know the decision is inevitable, but we know that decision has to be in harmony. And one thing I've asked, not God change the decision, because I know those decisions have to be made. But I pray for unity within the family in the midst of those decisions. So we had a conference call 
last week and all my family members were on that conference call and we said and and my mom was sitting right there that's a hard thing to do you know having a conference call when the person you're talking about is sitting right there in the room and every one of us were in agreement it was difficult we know the next step but i prayed three days before that phone call that that phone call or that family meeting would be one of unity it doesn't change the outcome but how we got there has to be together and i think god has honored that i think god has honored that and then five we pray to demonstrate our faith in god that he will do as he has promised in his word we pray to demonstrate the faith in ephesians chapter 3 20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Prayer is the primary means to seeing God's power. You have struggles. You have issues. You have needs. You have praise. You have hallelujahs. Give them to God. I love that song that we just sang about the church. The power is on our knees. When we get on our knees, we can reach into heaven. We have issues within our life. It's not about how long you pray. It's who you pray to. It's the heart that you have in your prayers. When we pray, God moves. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but as tempted in all points, just like you, yet without sin. Jesus knows, and he understands. Why do we pray? Why do we pray? We need God's power within my life, within your life, and within the church. We don't pray with idle words. We pray understanding who God is and what God wants and how God wants to change us. Not, thy will, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Let us there come boldly to the throne of grace that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. You know what that word boldly means? That means you're his son or you're his daughter. When any one of your kids have an issue and the bedroom door is locked or bedroom door is shut, you know what they can do? They're going to knock on that door and they're going to say, Dad, I need you. Mom, I need you. They are your son. They have an issue. They can come boldly into your presence. That's what Jesus is saying to us. When you have a need, you can come boldly. You don't have to be embarrassed about the issue. You can come boldly to the face of God, and God says, what is it? Does God know? Yes. But he wants to see, do you understand your scenario and how God can change what you're in if you focus on what he wants Come boldly to the throne of grace, to the throne of mercy. The unmerited favor and love of God. When we are out of grace, when we feel like we have sinned too far, we feel like nobody cares, and I'm all alone. The family of God, the child of God, the family of God and the child of God coming to the throne of God. We can come boldly. He is promised us since you're a child of mine anything that you need i will answer you may not like the answer but anything that you need i'm going to share with you i may even correct you i may even discipline you but i'm going to give you grace in the midst of your need come boldly to the throne of god and experience that grace of god and sometimes through prayer our hearts can be changed, our lives can be open, and God can do great things within us. In James chapter 5, verse 16, is probably on prayer, the most powerful scripture in prayer in the Bible. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay? And that's good stuff. Confess your trespasses. In other words, Admit when you're wrong. Admit that you have broken God's law or God's word. When God says this and you do this, it is sin. Confess your sins, your transgressions. If you know it's wrong, 
ask God to forgive you, to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. But the last part of that verse, you've seen on signs, you've seen them in your houses, and you've seen them on plates. It says this, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a woman succeeds much. When we pray, when we pray for others, when we pray for our scenario, the effective, in other words, understanding how God works, the effective prayer is, I need to agree with God, and I need God to work within my life. The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. I know what God wants for my life. I know what I need to do. I know God's word. I'm confessing my sins. I'm asking God to change my life. I am going to be a righteous individual because I'm a saved child of God. The effective righteous prayer avails much. Prayer wins. Prayer changes everything. This next three weeks, we're talking about prayer. Why do we pray? Very simply, God loves you. He loves you. He wants to change your life. He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you understanding. When life is confusing, fall on your knees before God. When you need a decision, ask God and he'll give it to us liberally. He'll give us a peace that passes all understanding because he knows we don't. And we don't know. The only way that we're going to know a supernatural answer of God is not asking other individuals. It's getting on our knees before God and say, God, I need you. I need your understanding. I need your guidance. I need your peace. And he said he will give it to us liberally. Generosity. He wants to help us. He wants to guide us. He wants to talk to us prayer. A believer getting a hold of his maker, being supernatural in the presence of God, and God smiling because his child says, Dad, can we talk? Puts a smile on God's face, and God reaches down and says, son or daughter, what do you want to talk about? Prayer is open, honest, heart-to-heart talk to God. It's not using big words, different language. It's not trying to talk Christianese. It's just talking to God, listening to God. See, I, I love worship, and I love praise and worship. I love music at the church. But what's more important than music at the church. Ready for this? Talking to God before church. If we don't prepare our hearts before we get in here, we're not ready to experience what God wants us to experience when we get in here. Praise and worship and worship of God is not 15 minutes on Sunday morning platform. If that's all the praise and worship and the honor of God we get, we're going to be sadly mistaken. Worship on our knees before God in prayer and him being the priority within our life whether it's morning noon or night honoring our Lord